I'm Alex Michelson. This week, the issue is the race for California governor. Be careful, Mr. Newsom. Be careful for what you wish for. Yeah. Republican gubernatorial candidate John Cox is here talking big issues like the gas tax, the DMV, homelessness, abortion, and President Trump. Cox may be trailing frontrunner Gavin Newsom, but that race appears to be tightening as the issue is starts right now. And welcome to The Issue Is. I'm Alex Michelson. With us is John Cox, Republican candidate for governor. Back in the uh, beginning of the year, few expected that John Cox would still be here in the race. Uh, but back in June, Cox finished second in the gubernatorial primary, Mr. beating Newsom several well-financed Democrats. Ever since, he's trailed frontrunner Gavin Newsom in funding and in the polls. But this recent poll from Probolsky Research shows Newsom with 44 percent and Cox with 39 percent, 17 percent still undecided. I'm sure you love the sight of that. Uh, John Cox, welcome to The Issue Is. Good to have you. Thank here. you, Alex. Great to be here. All right. So talk to us for a moment. What do you see as the biggest difference between you and Gavin Newsom? Having an affordable life in California, Alex. Uh, I'm meeting people all across the state who tell me they're working two and three jobs in order to make a go of it in this state. They're trying to be able to afford an apartment or a house someday, and it's, it's out of reach. Uh, they're burning four hour a gallon gasoline. They're watching their electricity bills go through the roof. Water, if it's even available, the, is costing more and more. They're driving two hours either way to get to work because they have to move farther away from work in order to have a place to live. Uh, it's not a quality life anymore for a lot of people, and a lot of people have decided to give up on California. I don't want that to happen, Alex. I'm, I'm a businessman who just decided I've had enough of this watching my friends and their families move away. We've got to do something about the affordability and livability here. All right, well, let's go through some of those issues. Let's start with the issue of what's happening at the DMV, which is something that you're talking about probably the most these days. Yeah. Uh, we've seen these long lines at the DMV. You've called for the head of the DMV to resign. But structurally, how do you fix the DMV? How do you change that? It's a sign of governmental incompetence, Alex. That's why I'm going there. You know, the DMV, waiting in line at the DMV for four or five hours, hasn't yet killed anybody and it hasn't maybe caused people to think about moving out of state but it is a a constant reminder of how government isn't working for the people let's talk about the gas tax another yeah. big issue for you you say it needs to be repealed that's on the ballot in november the idea of repealing it sure if it gets repealed though uh, what do you do to pay for infrastructure? Because it's there for a reason. It's there to fund these projects. Well, this is just like the DMV. You know, we're spending twice what Texas does to build a mile of road. So instead of fixing the problem in Caltrans, instead of getting things done efficiently and productively, they raise taxes. I'm going to build a whole lot of roads, Alex, but I'm going to use the money efficiently and productively just like I do in my own business. And the politicians, they're, they're out of touch. So they where do you get the money? We have it. It's yeah. already there. You just got to use it efficiently. Let's talk for a moment about housing, because yeah. as you say, affordability, one of the most important issues. How do you make it more affordable to buy a house in California? Well, that's the problem. And I'm in the housing industry and I build elsewhere uh, because the politicians in Sacramento have just larded on all kinds of fees and penalties and delays and approvals and things that have made the process so incredibly expensive to build a house here. That's why housing costs so much. It's really not the cost of the land. Uh, the land, especially in apartments like I built, is a relatively minor part of the cost of, a, of, a, of an apartment. Uh, another big issue is that of homelessness, uh, a huge problem oh, here in Southern yeah. California, really a crisis situation. Uh, we've seen recently the, the city here in Los Angeles yeah. starting to build some shelters there for 45 beds. It costs about two and a half million dollars. Do you think that California is making it too enticing to be homeless? Do you think well, there are too a, many homeless services here? No, this is, this is a tragedy, Alex. It's really a tragedy, but it's, it's caused by a lot of governmental problems. First of all, we, you just talked about it, the housing crisis. I mean, the rents keep going up. A lot of the homeless are people that just can't afford the rent increases any longer. But the other thing is the substance abuse the, and the mental illness treatment. 
we're spending billions of dollars on a train to nowhere going from Merced to Bakersfield because Governor Brown wants a legacy. Meanwhile, our legacy as people in this state is watching this homelessness tragedy occur on our watch. Let's spend some dollars on mental illness treatment, on substance abuse treatment, and get these people a real life. Another big issue is that of climate change. Governor Jerry Brown says that he wants California to be fossil fuel free by 2045. He says that climate change is in large part responsible for some of these fires getting as big as they've gotten. Do you think that man-made climate change is real? Well, let's talk about the fires in a second. And, and yes, I do believe it's real, but I do believe that we've done a lot in this state. What we don't have is common sense. What we've been doing is enacting a lot of policies which are putting a lot of costs on the average working Californian. You know, every one of these policies they pass, let's go 100% renewable, sounds wonderful. And I'm all for it to some degree, except for the cost. Mm -hmm. There's a cost to doing all this, and that cost is making gasoline more, ex more expensive. It's driving electricity prices through the roof. And remember this. That electricity price shows up in everything we buy. A dozen eggs in Los Angeles is $3.50. It's $2 in Phoenix. And what is that difference? A large part of it could be attributable to all these additional costs. So you think we're doing too much on the environment in I California? I think we don't have a balance. Alex, the special interests in Sacramento are all about getting their way. Well, you know what? A lot of times, their way isn't the best for the majority of the people of the state, especially the working Californians who have to shoulder a big part of this cost. Part of your job, potentially, as governor of California would be working yeah. with the executive branch of the country. President Trump has endorsed you. He's tweeted about you several times, uh, saying that, that you can win. Uh, I think we've got that up on the screen right there, uh, talking about the night that you won, what a great night, and that there may be a red wave coming. Um, do you want President Trump to come and campaign for you? Do you welcome a Donald Trump rally for you? Listen, we're both businessmen, but the, you know, the, the, my opponent is going to make the president an issue. I want to work with Washington, but the president didn't create the housing crisis. He didn't create the, the gasoline tax. He didn't create schools that are now 47th in the nation. But the president's also pretty important on the political conversation. Uh, so you, do you welcome a, a President Trump rally? He's the president of the United States, uh, but I'm focusing on the issues that matter to Californians in their everyday lives, the things that I'm going to have an impact on. I'm not going to have much impact on what happens in the wars in Washington. I'll take that you're not answering that, and, which means that maybe <laughs> it's a no. So uh, as you mentioned, it's your opponent... It's not the real issue. That's the point. Your opponent, he is... He is using this phrase that you're a parrot of President Trump. He's talking about that when it comes to the issue of, uh, of immigration here. Take a listen. Like John Cox, with all due respect, could parrot, literally parrot, President Donald Trump, who today could end the policy, quite literally today could end the policy, uh, is a real contrast in this race. That was talking about family separation. What do you say to that? He'd like to have the whole race about the president. And, and that's, there's a good reason for that, Alex. Because he's been part of the problem for 16 years, done nothing about homelessness, the schools that aren't performing, the cost of living, the cost of gasoline, the cost of housing, the fires that are threatening our very lives. You know, I mean, he'd like to make it all about the issue of the moment and the media sensation. I'm not interested in those partisan fights. I'm interested in getting results for the people of this state that's why I'm running, and I decided to run for governor well before President Trump was elected because I saw the problems that were happening in this state, and I decided I was going to do something about it. Okay, and, and I want to ask you one other national question, which could become a local issue, and it's an issue yeah. that's important to a lot of people. Brett Kavanaugh, uh, now likely going to be uh, confirmed for the Supreme Court. Um, there's a lot of concern among Democrats that Brett Kavanaugh will overturn Roe v. Wade, which would mean that abortion is a state's right issue, which means that what the governor of California has to say about abortion suddenly matters. Uh, do you think that abortion should be legal in California? And it doesn't matter much in California because California has a privacy right that's already built into its constitution, which I think actually even predates Roe v. Wade. So. I'm not running to change that at all. As I said you know, before, Alex, I ran for governor well before President Trump was elected because I saw the schools not performing. I saw the roads a mess. 
I saw the fires so, so and it the sounds, cost so of it living. Sounds, it sounds like I'm you not think, running. I'm not running on that issue. So at do all. you think that abortion should be remain legal in California? I'm not. I'm not running to change it. I'm personally pro-life, but I'm not running to change that issue one iota. I'm dedicated to delivering results of the cost of living and a better life for California. All right, last time you were here, you played our game called Personal Issues, and you okay. talked about uh, that Bruce Springsteen was one of the first concerts that you saw. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we've got a little Bruce for you as we go to commercial Is that right? Break. Oh, yeah. good. <laughs> um, and uh, we're going to be boss. playing another round of Personal Issues coming up. We're going to get to know Mr. Cox a little bit as an individual, how he grew up as a Democrat as well, and uh, the impact of his family on his life. Stay with us. A look at Santa Monica, Sky Fox flies overhead. We're playing the Superman theme because the last time John Cox was here, he told us that Superman was his favorite superhero. <laughs> okay. We're back now with John Cox. Uh, a big part of running is really getting to know you as an individual, as people try to, to okay. get to know you. And, and because you haven't been on uh, the stage for that long in California, and people are trying to figure out who you are. So part of this is to get to know who you are. And, and I want you to talk for a moment about your mom's impact on you. Yeah, it's interesting. You mentioned Superman as one of my heroes, but really my hero was John F. Kennedy when I was growing up. Uh, my mom was an ardent Democrat, a uh, union member, and she was, uh, she was in love with John F. Kennedy and his message, you know, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And I used to imitate him uh, for my mom, and she thrilled uh, at it. And, uh, you know, it, it was a struggle, you know, because my real father uh, left. My, my mom was, was date raped and, and uh, had me as a result. And, uh, and it was tough uh, not knowing who my father was or ever seeing him. And, but my mom really, you know, was a strong woman. She made sure I got a good education. She had two master's degrees herself from, from Berkeley. Uh, and she was a librarian, so she made sure that I read, and I, I still read a lot today, thanks to her. When did you decide to become a Republican? <laughs> well, it's interesting. You know, I, I ran for delegate to the Democratic Convention uh, in 1976, uh, but then I got into the business world, and I, I discovered, you know, that, that government wasn't uh, the answer for a lot of things. Uh, I want to see a California where people like me, who start at the bottom, can really, you know, start a business and and have a, 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 a something that they can call their own and, and, and rise up from a, a low level. Yeah, I notice you're wearing a Ronald Reagan tie right now. I am as, indeed. As well. he, he's one of my heroes. And speaking of starting at the bottom and rising up, you started with nothing, as you talked about, and yeah. made some $200 million with a variety of businesses. Congratulations yeah. on that. Um, let's talk about your family as well. Uh, you've got a, a wife, and you're Wonderful proud of your, of your daughters yes. as well. How have they shaped uh, your worldview? Well, you know, I, I love my daughters, and, you know, listen, uh, I've tried to teach them as well that public service and, and caring for others is extremely important, and my daughters have all been involved in a charity that I started back in Chicago called uh, Rebuilding Together, where we repair the homes of elderly and disabled uh, people, and, you know, the experience of actually physically doing labor like that and helping someone make their house a little bit nicer uh, it's, it's just a wonderful thing, and, and it enriches you. It's, it's not about helping the other person. It, it is a little bit, but it's also about helping you feel better about helping others. Okay, we want to do something called personal issues once again. Uh, sure. This is uh, 30 seconds to get to know you a little bit better with some rapid-fire questions. Yeah. So the first one is favorite movie. Oh, Field of Dreams. Favorite candy. Uh, oh, boy, uh, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Good choice. Yeah. Uh, favorite Disneyland ride? Oh, gosh. Uh, well, it isn't Dumbo. I get car sick. So, uh, <laughs> and it's not, it's a small world. I've been on that a thousand times. Uh, I guess it would be one of the roller coasters. Favorite, do you have a favorite nickname? Uh, for myself yeah. or for somebody for else? You. For me, uh, Johnny Canoe. What, what's the story behind that? Uh, well, it was just a place that a bunch of us went to as, as kids. And who's, uh, who's your role model? Uh, Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan's your role really, model. Really, and truly, and Jack Kemp. Well, speaking of Ronald Reagan, uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the most prominent people in California politics today and play something called The Name Game, your reaction to some of them. Stay with us for that. So, speaking of 
speaking of Say My Name, we're back with John Cox, the Republican candidate for California governor. We want to play a little game of name association because we've got so many things to talk about. We're trying to get to them quickly. So okay. when I say this name, if you could try to say one word or, or something very brief about, oh, okay. about so these are These are nice names and people I would know. Yeah, they're all okay. people you would know. I don't know okay. if they'll all be nice <laughs> names, but we'll see. Uh, the first one, uh, Governor Jerry Brown. Really? Okay. Uh, train. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom. Uh, superficial. Uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein. Dedicated. Senator Kamala Harris. Empty. Mm. Uh, former Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh. Bodybuilding. <laughs> Your uh, primary opponent, Republican Assemblyman Travis Allen. Oh, um, good looking. <laughs> <laughs> the President of the United States, Donald uh, Trump. <laughs> a businessman. Okay, there you go. <laughs> you got through it. Wasn't Gosh, that hard? A that was pretty tough. Yeah. <laughs> a reminder <laughs> that all of our uh, past episodes of The Issue Is are available in podcast form, including we actually have a sit-down interview with Mr. Cox. You can get a lot more about his policy positions there as well. Just search for The Issue Is wherever you stream. When we come back, we talk about the future of the Republican Party in California. And no more say my name. Oh, thank God. I know God. you love Destiny's Child, though, right? Was that one of your oh, favorite bands? Totally, absolutely. Yeah, Michelle Williams, more than Beyonce, Moody though, right? Blues. <laughs> Moody Blues. Moody Blues. Moody Blues is your is They're your all game? old guys right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> As of now, I am a candidate seeking the Republican nomination for governor. The Republican Party was once a powerhouse in California, from Ronald Reagan to Arnold Schwarzenegger. But not right now. There are no Republicans elected statewide. Democrats have huge majorities in the Assembly and the Senate. And more people are registered as declined a state uh, party than Republicans. So, John Cox, the Republican candidate for governor, what went wrong in California with the Republican Party? Uh, I think there's a lot of Republicans that maybe got lost in the special interests and the, the corruption in Sacramento. Uh, I'm going to try to work us back to being that party of small government, uh, that delivers results for people. You know, some people point to what happened with Pete Wilson and Prop 187 and say that the Republican Party went too far against undocumented immigrants. Do you think that that's true? Well, it may be. Uh, I'm more of a Jack Kemp Republican who believes that this city is that shining city on a hill that attracts people from all over the world, and it should. Uh, I think we failed uh, to secure the border, which allowed a lot of people to come across uh, illegally, and I think that's a problem. Uh, but I'd like to see more people be able to come to this country legally. Uh, and I think we need to make sure that we uh, have security along with that. Okay, last question. You're a Republican running in a state that voted for Hillary Clinton over Donald Trump by over three million votes. There are no Democrats elected statewide in this race, and most experts don't think that you're going to win. How do you pull this off? Oh, I think I am going to pull it off. And I think it's because the people of this state just want results. I think they're getting tired of the partisanship that's going on, uh, both in Washington and in this state. You know, there's no Republican or Democratic way to build a road. There's no Republican or Democratic way to build a reservoir. Uh, there's no Republican or Democrat way to teach a child. Uh, we need to get back to, to first uh, priorities here, and that is to make sure our children get educated, to make sure we build enough housing that people can afford it. We need to make sure that gasoline is available. We need to make sure that water is available and, and, and cost effective. Uh, we need to make sure that our roads are built well, that, that mass uh, transit is in an area where it will benefit people and not just be a white elephant. These are things that I think people are focused on. I think it's the reason that I'm resonating with people and, and climbing in the polls because they're tired of all this partisanship. They want change. Uh, my opponent is the status quo. I think he's going to, he would make things in Sacramento far worse and more partisan. I'm going to try to cure that. Well, we want there to be a debate, and we were happy to host a debate here. Yeah, I'm happy but, to do that too. Uh, if you had one message for Gavin Newsom, what would that message be? We need to fix California. We should not be uh, uh, doing partisan battle uh, over what's going on in Washington because that's not going to change uh, California. That's not going to make this state more livable and affordable. We've got to make sure people have a good life here in California so they want to stay here and not move elsewhere. 
All right. Well, I think it's the greatest state in the country. I do, too. And uh, thank I you very too. much for joining us thank and sharing you, your views. Thank you. And we've made a similar offer to Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom to join us for the entire half hour. He says he wants to do it, and we hope to welcome him here soon to share his views. And Election Day, by the way, is November 6th, so get registered and go vote. Thanks for watching The Issue Is. Have a great weekend and a good night. Well, excuse me for a while, but it's time to propagate. I'm coming from the land where the seasons never change.